Hey everybody, welcome back to another Permaslug episode. My name is Jonathan, and today what I wanted to do is quickly show you one of my favorite features of the new Oxygen 3.7 version, and that is the automatic table of contents. So what I have on my screen here is just an example page using the material design design set that I have available. And what I've done is gone ahead and just copied and pasted a bunch of kind of, you know, default information. These are just a bunch of things that I copied out of other websites, but all of these headings have a heading tag on them like H2 or H3, for instance. And you can see there's just a bunch of stuff on here for this example content. But if your site gets really long and you're going to have people that are scrolling really far down the page, one thing that would be helpful is to have a table of contents or kind of like an index at the top of the page for them. And you can definitely write that manually. And there are plugins out there, but Probably why you're using Oxygen is because you want your site to be faster and not use plugins. So Oxygen 3.7 introduces a composite element called the table of contents. So let's jump into the Oxygen editor real quick. So what I'm gonna do is open my structure panel real quick and I'm gonna add a new section on the page real quick. I want this to be the very top because this is going to effectively be my table of contents like container. So what I'll do first is just add a heading and I'm just gonna write TOC inside of it. And then what we'll do is just go to add and then table of contents is a composite element. So it has this kind of like new oxygen, like purple logo on it. So you can just click on table of contents and it's going to pop in sort of the default styles. What's cool about these is they all have classes on them. So let me open up the uh, structure pane a bit more here and you can see this is kind of the main wrapper container. And then here is the code. It's basically just some JavaScript that automatically finds the headings on the page for you and then attaches IDs to it. So then it's really easy to just click the button and be scrolled to the appropriate place. So let me just save this real quick and then we'll go take a look on the front end and I'll just show you how it works. So basically it's gonna find the H2 as the first main heading on the page. And then under that is the H3s, then H4 and then five and six, of course. But if I click on this heading right here, what is lorem ipsum? It takes me to this H2 and it is a little bit offset because of course the admin bar is there. And then this one beneath it is an H3. So if I go, what is lorem ipsum? Of course, it takes me to that particular heading. Now it automatically scans the entire page. So you saw we had that article from Wikipedia on the mountain Denali and a few headings underneath that, then some WordPress stuff. So I'm at the very top of the page right now. And if I wanted to go like, you know, history, then that takes me basically to the very bottom of the page, which is super awesome. One thing that's super cool about the table of contents element is that it's able to scan pretty much any content you have on your page. So all this stuff you're looking at right here, this first section of lorem ipsum is built using just the typical oxygen element. So it's got the H2 tag right here on that heading. It's got an H3, then just some text H3 and so on. And then this stuff down here is actually in a rich content element. So I wanted to see, was it able to pull in the heading tags from the rich content element which it actually wasn't at first, but they managed to fix it and push an update through the composite element function. So after they fixed it, all I had to do was re-add the table of contents element, and then that update was fixed for me, which was super awesome. The other thing is that it also works through the inner content element. So let me take some of this heading stuff right here. I'm just gonna copy, copy some of this right here, just this stuff again. And then I'm gonna go edit this page on the admin side. I'm gonna paste this in, and then of course I gotta fix the edit lock, so give me a second to do that, and then I'll show you that it also works from the inner content, which is super cool. Okay, so I got this stuff copied in. I just added the number two at the end of these headings so that we can differentiate that, but you can see this is in the inner content element, you know, basically the WordPress content editor. So now I'm gonna jump back into Oxygen and we'll get it added to the page. Okay, so let's just add a new section in here, and then we're gonna to go to the text element, we're gonna use the dynamic data function to insert the post content for us. So there's those two headings, geology and features two, and then geography two. So let's save that. And then we'll go on the front end real quick. And then sure enough, it's right there. So it's able to scan pretty much any type of content on your page. And the reason why this is cool is you could stick this table of contents element at the top of like your post details template. So, you know, you could kind of have it collapsed in like an MDL menu, which I'll show you in just a second. So that way there's like a table of contents at the top of your blog posts or whatever kind of posts you're working with. And you don't have to manually add it to every single page, which is awesome. Now I mentioned showing you how to make this collapsible. So this is a component that's included with the material design set that I have available for you. This is called the MDL menu. So what we're gonna do is go back over here to Oxygen, and then I'm gonna go to add library, design sets, material design light, 
We're gonna go to sections and elements, content, and then we're gonna find the MDL menu, which is right here. And what this does is make this little dots right here or whatever icon you change it to kind of a pop-up menu. So what I'm gonna do first of all is just take this whole MDL menu container, I'm gonna pull it up here in this section and then we can just delete this one. And then one thing you have to do with this MDL menu container is I need to take the ID of this code block right here and then go to the menu div into attributes and just replace the code block ID. And then I'm going to basically delete all the stuff in here except for one text element. I'm gonna take our table of contents and stick it in there. Delete that text link now. And then our menu div, we're gonna set this to a width of like 350 pixels. So we're gonna save this and then let's go take a look on the front end now. So if we click this, then our table of contents opens in this nice pop-up menu, which is super awesome. If you click one of these links, then that menu closes for you automatically. And then best of all, of course, this is responsive. So if we go take a look on the iPhone X screen size, then of course everything fits and works just fine. Once again, I can click one of these things and it takes us right to the content we just clicked, which is super awesome. So the summary of this video is that I just simply wanted to show you what the table of contents element does, how easy it is to use, and then taking it a little bit further with this MDL menu component makes it a very viable solution for a lot of different use cases. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in a future video.